How does your hobby FDM 3D printing compare to professional techniques like nylon SLS? Let's put it to the test and find out with an F1 in schools team on their way to the world finals. Today I am joined by the members of Team Surge, the Australian national champions for the development class of F1 in schools, and they're on their way to the world final. Longtime viewers of the channel might remember that back when I was a teacher, I used to run this program in the schools, and we also were successful in reaching the world finals. They've brought with them a range of models from different materials they've been testing back to back, but before we get to that, let's get to know the team. The first thing to understand is that this is a collaboration team, split between two schools in New South Wales and Victoria. The girls are from Corowa Anglican School, from both Hypernova and Undespacito, and others from Expeditious, a team from my former school, Blue Mountains Grammar School. Together, they form Team Surge and are heading to Saudi Arabia in late November to represent Australia in the World Finals. Hi, my name is Tessa and I'm the team manager for Surge. Hi, I'm Lachlan Burgess. I'm financial manager and graphic refinement for Team Surge. Hi, I'm Finn. I'm the design en engineer for Surge. Hi, I'm Elaine, and I am the quality tester. Hi, I'm Annabelle, and I am the graphic creative and financial manager. Hi, I'm Lizzie, I'm the manufacturing engineer. F1 in Schools is the largest global STEM competition for high school students, challenging teams to design, engineer, and manufacture miniature F1 racing cars. There's a lot more to the comp than these cars, but that's what we're going to focus on today. The core of the car has to be CNC machined from either balsa or foam, both materials supplied by the organisers. But Finn has discovered in the regulations, you can actually have a thin shell over some of the balsa. So Surge are hoping to gain a competitive advantage by utilising this in the competition. So as you might expect, they're testing a range of different materials to find out what's best. We have plain balsa to act as a baseline, and then a series of plastics which we regularly print at home using our consumer grade 3D printers. These include Polylight PLA, Form Futura Apollo X, which is ASA, and Polymaker Polysmooth, which is PVB. A couple of notes, I've made a video previously about printing engine bay car parts with Apollo X, and I've also got a video testing out Polysmooth and the Polisher, so to learn more, please check the links in the description. On the more industrial side, we have a series of prints done in SLS using Nylon 12. This is the same process as used by the Fuse 1 from Formlabs, and the much more affordable Microtics Desktop SLS. This was recently funded on Kickstarter, but then the project was cancelled once Formlabs acquired them. For this test, we have a raw SLS part, but also something more interesting. A company called 3D Explorer has not only printed the parts for them, but offered them to test their vapor smoothing post-processing technique. We can see from the before and after that the fine powder texture should be removed. As part of their industry collaboration, the team went and visited 3D Explorer to see how the process worked and witnessed their parts being post-processed firsthand. Industry collaboration is a big part of the project, and one of their other partners is PPG. That was another visit to have this beautiful green and gold two-color fleck custom paint applied to one of their test models. Back to our test models and there's a couple of wildcards, such as PTFE sheet vacuum formed over the balsa, and this carbon fiber skin molded by the team. There's a range of factors that the team need to test for to find the best solution. The first of those is manufacturability. Can the parts be made in-house? And how many additional steps are needed to get it to the final version? And for this, unsurprisingly, the regular hobby filaments went out. Anything in SLS requires a trip to an external supplier, as does the fancy paint on top of the surface preparation. Every part of the car has to meet a certain minimum and maximum size requirements based on the official F1 in schools regulations. For example, this section here has a minimum thickness of 3mm to ensure it's strong enough to handle the force of the power unit during a race. So dimensional accuracy is absolutely crucial both for assembly and adherence to the rules. The team went over each of these cars, checking for things like warping and dimensional stability. Each material was able to meet the 0.8 requirement for minimum thickness. The ASA was the only material that had any warping, and generally all of the materials were within a specified tolerance for accuracy so other factors become more important in picking a winner. So for the competition, we have a minimum weight that we'd like to achieve. So to ensure we can do this, we would like to choose the lightest possible material. 
If you want to be competitive in F1 in schools, you have to be on the minimum weight. The heaviest of all the materials was the ASA, with the shell combination coming in at almost 26 grams, the PLA was mid-range at just under 20 grams, and the lightest material was the SLS printed nylon 12 at under 18 grams. The carbon fibre skin wasn't any lighter than the printed options, but the ripples on the inside did ruin the dimensional accuracy to some extent. Another key factor for the parts is being as smooth as possible to reduce aerodynamic drag from skin friction, which is why the team undertake extensive CFD and actual wind tunnel testing to hone their designs. Unsurprisingly, the professional paint job wins here, but the vapor smooth versions of the SLS nylon finish behind on the podium. These cars are crazy fast, so there's one more crucial aspect to their construction. We also want our car to be strong enough to withstand the force applied to it when it virtually stops at the end of the track. And that's why the team is joining us today. We wanted to do some destructive testing for the cars. So, let's smash some cars. Previously, I designed this destructive testing machine based on a design by Fireball Tool. It's open source and the link to get it from printables is in the description. It was a bit of experimentation in working out the best way to mount the test models as well as the best way to clamp them. With that sorted, let's look at the results, starting with a bare balsa block as a baseline. The first hit is a glancing blow, and the second hit smashes the balsa apart. Every follow-up hit gets worse from there, so it's clear that the shell is a good idea to increase the strength of the car. Let's eliminate another option almost immediately. The PTFE wrapped balsa seemed to be fairly robust, but after around 10 or so hits, the outer surface split and the balsa snapped underneath soon after that. Given how hard it was to manufacture, this was a welcome result to cut down options. Next, Polylite PLA, and this is the first in a series of samples that we gave up on because after around 30 or so hits, there was only superficial damage present on the tip. It's true that PLA can be brittle compared to other filaments, but let's not pretend that it's going to snap the second it sees any load, particularly when it's supported by the balsa core. Next in the vice is Apollo X, which is essentially ASA and this behaved much like PLA, we gave up after around 30 hits because again it was showing no signs of deterioration. An interesting one for me was the PolySmooth, specifically would this post-processing make the part stronger or weaker? We had our answer after only a single hit, with the shell exploding and the balsa snapping all from a single blow. I was quite surprised by this, but I guess this filament and its treatment is still great for cosmetic models. So not bad for PLA and ASA, so how would the SLS nylon compare and would the smoothing process make that any weaker than the original? Let's start with the untreated SLS nylon 12. And this, like the PLA and ASA, showed zero signs of damage, and unlike them, not really even any scuffs on the surface. Again, we gave up after 30 hits because it was clear that nothing was going to happen. And now for a copy that had been vapor smoothed and then some paint applied over the top and this time round, there seemed to be zero deterioration of impact strength. There were some scuffs in the surface of the paint which you would fully expect, but the structural integrity of the parts were not compromised at all. So again, after around 30 hits, we gave up. To better understand the results, we tried to put in just the top shell by itself, and seeing it loaded into the vise gives us clue as to why it's so effective in this application. As you can see, this material is able to deform quite a lot without actually yielding. Let's have another look in super slow-mo and see just how far this shell can flex before springing back into its original shape perfectly. As you can see, after removing it from the vise, it's still in perfect condition. This part is a really good mix of strength, flexibility, and vital to this competition, dimensional stability. Just for fun, we repeated the same test with the molded carbon shell. And while this wasn't as elastic as the nylon, it still seemed to have enough flex to spring back into its original position but it did look like eventually there were some natural points where the stresses would concentrate and the part might fail. And for those craving destruction, I'm sorry we didn't feel the need to smash up the PPG painted car, as we already knew how Balsa without the shell would react. After all that testing, guys, what, what's your thoughts? Where do you think you're heading? Well, with the FDM parts like PLA, Apollo X, Polysmooth PVB, they're much easier to manufacture but their surface finish and accuracy is not quite as good when compared to the SLS parts. The SLS parts were really promising, particularly the SLS nylon 12 variant. The Vapor Smooth version gave us excellent accuracy and a better surface finish compared to those untreated parts. 
Yeah, we definitely agree that the vapor smoothed SLS parts seem to offer the best balance of properties, especially in terms of strength and surface finish. It's not extremely expensive either, and we were really lucky to have 3D Explorer to help us with the process. If we're looking for a balance between strength and surface finish, I think the SLS Nylon 12 vapor smooth version might be our best bet. And the painted car looks incredible and there's a significant weight reduction too. But at the same time, we're still a little bit worried about how much strength we might be sacrificing with that option. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Please participate in our poll on our website and linked below and share your opinion. That's right, you can have your say by heading to the team's website linked in the description and voting on one of the options you've seen in this video. Or if you think there's something they haven't considered, there's an area to give that feedback to. As for my two cents, I'd be going for the smooth SLS nylon as well. These are the type of parts that I wish that all of us enthusiasts could make easily at home, which is why I think it's such a shame that the Micron Desktop SLS, despite its problems, was discontinued. There is one other option that I know about called SLS for All. I've linked the website below so you can check it out. This looks quite promising, but it's not exactly affordable for most people. I'd also like to compliment the team on their professionalism and innovation. They're doing everything to a high standard and pushing the boundaries of the rules in the process, which is what F1 is all about. There's also way more to the car than what we've covered here, including these magnetically latching axles, which are surprisingly strong and have a very perfect fit. Everything I've seen is carefully and skillfully designed and then manufactured with skill and precision. I know firsthand from when I was a teacher in this competition, it costs a lot of money to go overseas and compete in the world finals. So if you're interested in sponsoring the team or perhaps donating, Lucky, where can they go? So our website, teamsurgeau.com is now up. Yeah, please go check us out. We have everything about our car, about our achievements. And the GoFundMe link, is that correct? Yes, there is a GoFundMe link there. So if you've got a couple of dollars spare, please consider helping these guys out in their quest to be the best in the world. I'll leave the final word to Team Surge. Innovate, collaborate, elevate. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.